one time, and I thought I was going to be this cool pastor that everybody liked me, and and uh, and God whooped me over that, and He chastened my soul over that, and and God said that's not for you. If you if you serve the Lord, then serve the Lord. Don't serve men. Amen. And God will direct you, and, and God will bless you. But anyway. Um, I'm glad that God has brought me to the place in my life where uh, I trust His Word. Before I trust anything, I trust the Bible. And um, somebody had written us an email, and I actually have a, a, a portion of a website that he sent me. I'm going to put it up on the screen here in a little bit. Um, he, was, he was really in doubt because he had went to a website, Arlene, and it was just full of anti-King James venom. I mean, it was just full of venom. Uh, and this guy was supposing to be a Christian, and he said, I use the King James, but... And this is where we get always get in trouble, and especially some of you who have probably talked to a pastor before, and they'll like to, they'll, they'll want to act like they're on your side, and they'll say, we, well, I use the King James, but... Okay? Um, then they go off on all these other things that they use, and this and that and the other, and I'm going to... I'm going to I'm going to mind the Lord this weekend. I'm going to try to I'm just going to try to follow the Lord. I've got a bunch of slides that I'm going to bring up here on the screen. But if God takes it a different direction tonight, then that's where we're going to go. And we're just going to you just pray for me and just pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us uh, through the pages of His Word tonight. Can I hear you say Amen? But they but they, they, this website was just full of anti King James Bible venom, and this guy was writing me and he was basically saying help, help. Because they're writing things on here that it looks like that this is not the Word of God. Help. And I prayed for him and I was looking at the website and I told him, I said, I'm going to be dealing with some things this weekend. You know, you know kind of watch it and he wanted to know the times and everything like that and how to get to it. And I told him. Um, but it was, I just, I rejoiced is that a day later, he had sent me some other things he was asking about. And a day later, he sent me back and he said, never mind, I get it. Amen. He said, this is the Word of God right here. Uh, Y'all know the rules. You know the rules? Amen. Let's, uh, let's look at the rules very quickly. 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's, let's examine it with two rules that we go by here at this church. Okay? Two rules. And they're real simple. Very simple rules. Okay? Rule number one. Wayne, what is rule number one? There are no mistakes. There's no mistakes, in the Bible. There's no mistakes in the Bible. That's rule number one. Write that down. Okay? Rule number two. If you think you found one, refer to rule number one. Okay? And let me tell you where I'm at on this thing. I refuse to believe anything that this Bible does not tell me to believe. Amen. I refuse to believe that there is one error in this book. I refuse. Now, people might call me hard-headed, stubborn, closed-minded, and they're right. Okay? Because I've been around the block. I've circled the block several times on this issue. Okay? And I've come back to where God first started me years ago back in this church. I was... I told the trout. I was showing the Troutmans. I said, "Up there, I got, I got baptized up there," and I said, "I got married right up here, okay?" And uh, I got, I answered the call to preach right here. I mean, I'm not kidding. I was right here when I answered the call to preach. And old preacher golf, brother Sterling, old preacher golf, he preached this old King James Bible like he had authority with it, and he did. And that's what I was raised. That's where I cut my teeth on. Okay? I've sat in every spot in this church, and all those pews are sitting. I've sat there, and that's what I heard here. And then I went off, and I heard other things that I'd never heard before. And then I started believing, well, yeah, there are mistakes in it, but I'm surprised I didn't know that when I was a kid growing up. And I started believing that, and then God brought me back around by His grace when God should have thrown me out and could have thrown me out. This is why I believe that God's not done yet. God's still not done saving souls. And by the way, God's still not done pulling back the backsliders. And you ought to tell God, thank you for that one. Because maybe, maybe the middle of next month, you might end up being one of them backsliders. And you'll be, amen? And you'll be glad God's still pulling people back. Amen? You'll be glad of that. And so anyway, and where do I get that rule? Number one. Rule number one, there's no mistakes in the Bible. 
First Peter chapter 2, verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the Scripture. Behold, isn't that something? Look at that. And I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to just look at words in the Bible. Words like Scripture and book and written. Think about that. Scripture is what is written down. When your doctor gives you a prescription, he does, I've never seen a doctor that said, Now, Douglas, go to the pharmacy and tell them I said that you need a, a bottle of 150 oxycodones. Okay? And so you go to the pharmacy and, yeah, my doctor said I need a whole bottle of uh, oxycodone. And they're going to look at you and go, where's the prescription? Oh, no, he told it to me. Does that fly? Does that work in Indianapolis? Doesn't work in Missouri either. It's got to be written down. Amen? It's got to be signed and written down. It's got to be legal. It's got to be proof of it. And that's what the word Scripture means. It's written down. Behold also it is contained in the Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Aren't you glad you're not confused anymore? Say amen. amen. When you read four or five different Bibles, you're confused. That's right. When you read one, you get it. Okay? Verse 7, Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. And when I, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you where this guy's coming from. Whenever I say Jesus, I mean Jesus and the Bible. You nod your head and say yes. yes. Amen? When I say Jesus, I mean Jesus and the Bible. And some, and I'll tell you something, that website was full of this stuff that, well, I worship God, I don't worship the Bible. Well, he's, he got it right. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? There is no difference. And when Jesus comes back in Revelation 19, the proof of it is there because He has a name written on Him that says what? The Word of God. They're the same thing. So, when I say that Jesus is precious, I'm saying this is precious. He is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Isn't that interesting that the NIV will put there the capstone? Jesus is no longer the foundation stone, He's the capstone. You know what the capstone is? Get your dollar bill out and look on the back of it. And that all-seeing, magical eye, the eye of, of Horus, that's the capstone that's on top of the unfinished pyramid. If you want to know what the unfinished pyramid is all about, go read Re uh, Genesis chapter 11. It's the unfinished work of Satan that has yet to be accomplished. God put a stop to it back in Genesis chapter 11. By the way, I don't have a religion that has an unfinished work. Amen. Amen? My religion, the finished work was done 2,000 years ago on, on Mount Calvary. Amen? Jesus, Jesus didn't say it is finished just to be joking around with everybody. He said it is finished. Amen? And, and it's over and done with. Anyway, unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at what? The Word being disobedient. So this website this guy sent me was just, I mean, it was long. It was one of them long things. you got to scroll way down and get down to the bottom. I don't like this because I can't read that long. Okay? If it was in comic book form or something like that, it would be a lot easier for me. Big pictures, you know? But anyway, just scroll way down. And it was just full of stumbling stones. Both the guy that wrote the website was stumbling... And he was causing others to stumble at the Word. And this was manifest to me one time when I was uh, speaking uh, for the Prophecy Club. <clears throat> no more. Okay. Uh, up in uh, Lansing, Michigan. That's where it was. And... Um, on this side, of, we had one of them hotel meeting rooms, and on this side, there was a bunch of people that was just, I mean, they wanted to, they would just believe in the Bible. And, they were, and there was a group of people sitting back here, kind of where Roy is right here, okay, the two Roys, okay. There was a bunch of people sitting there. They were from this, they were from this quote-unquote church where they had rewritten the King James Bible, and they'd taken the name of Jesus out and replaced it with Yahushua. They were, they were the sacred name people. He handed me this Bible. Have you ever seen this Bible? And I went, is that a King James? He said, well, it's based on the King James. I'm going, you know, that don't sound the same. It don't sound right to me. 
And what it was, they were part of a cult. A cult that said, if you don't say this name exactly the way we tell you to say it, you're not saved. That's a lie. Okay? His name is Jesus Christ. Everybody say amen. That's what, isn't that what you read here? By the way, God's name is not Yahweh. It's Jehovah. That's what it says in here. Where did you where did you hear Yahweh? For you never read Yahweh from this Bible. You never did. It's Jehovah in this Bible. Do we accept this Bible as right? Okay. Rule number one. No mistakes. So if the King James translators looked at that word and said that's pronounced Jehovah, and that's what they put in here, that's what I believe. Okay. There's a lot of stumbling stones out there. A lot of stuff that people are being told to believe that are not in the Scriptures. And I want to help set people free. I like being free. Amen? And being free is better than being cheap. Amen? He got it. Amen? I'd rather be free than cheap. Okay? I, and I want people to be set free. And people are in all kinds of little bondages. And a lot of little bondages make one big gigantic bondage. And they're being told to believe things that are not scriptural, that are not in the Bible. Okay? And I want to help you with that. But anyway, the, the, that website was full of stumbling stones, causing people to stumble over, over the Bible, saying that there were mistakes in the Bible. And there are None. Never has been. There are not now any mistakes in the Bible, and there never will be. You say, you can't say that. Yes, I can. So we are born again, verse 23 of the previous chapter, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. It is not only not corrupted, it doesn't, it, you cannot corrupt it. You cannot corrupt the real Word of God. It cannot happen. And so anyway, that's the rules. Now, Second Peter chapter 2. And I, I've got all these slides uh, that hopefully I'll get to tonight. Um, and poor Gary back there, he's learned something new tonight with the, with, the prompt, with the whole video thing. And now he's got to switch from the camera feed to the slide. I showed him how to... You still got it? Still, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Nobody here will be able to, you know, will know that anything bad has happened. It's the poor people out there, okay? But anyway, you pray for him, and, and uh, he is... I want to tell you something. When God calls you, He calls you high. Amen. And Gary's way over his head with this stuff. Okay? But anyway, we thank God for him. Amen. Anyway, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. The Bible will spend an entire chapter teaching you about, it, teaching you about an issue of life. Okay? Uh, th and this is, you stop and think about this. I heard a preacher talking about this last night, and it just really rings true. If you want to know about marriage, go to Ephesians chapter 5. The Bible will teach you about marriage. Amen? Uh, if you want to know about uh, salvation, go to the book of Romans. The Bible will teach you about salvation. Uh, you, if, it, it's just all kinds of things. There's places all through the Bible where, where the Bible will spend an entire chapter. If you want to know about pure love, go to 1 Corinthians 13. It will teach you a whole chapter worth of pure love called charity. Okay, And so anyway, here in Second Peter chapter 2, the Bible's giving you a whole chapter on, on false prophets, false teachers, and false doctrine. What is behind them and how they work. And here's something I've really, I'm really starting to clue into in the Scriptures. The Bible will not only lead you to the truth, it will lead you away from what's false by identifying it for you so you'll recognize it from here on out. You'll be able to know what is true and what is false if... Um, uh, if, if Brady were here tonight, Brady works in, and he manages a McDonald's restaurant. I'm sure at some point they've taught him how to recognize a fake $20 bill and a real $20 bill, a fake $50 bill and a real $50 bill, or a fake 100 and a real 100. They've taught him how to recognize that stuff. I, might, I probably wouldn't know. You could hand me fake hundreds all day long, and I'm not sure that I'd be able to know it. Okay? I mean, I don't handle money a whole lot, and I don't handle hundreds very often at all. And you can hand me a fake $100 bill, and I, I probably wouldn't get it. I, you know, I'd say, oh, thank you a lot. Praise the Lord, you know. 